The dreamers are part of this country. They're America's future. They're helping to build this great nation. And they need our attention now. The Republicans control both the House, the Senate, and the White House. One of the principal responsibilities is to pass a budget. We're now three months into the fiscal year, and we don't have a budget. And we're talking about another continuing resolution. A couple weeks ago, we were told on the floor, give a couple more weeks and we'll work out some of these issues. I agree with Senator Durbin. The time to act is now. We should not be going into recess without dealing with the problems of our country. We can deal with the budget problems, and we certainly need to deal with the problems of the dreamers. Let me just talk a little bit about the dreamers, because they entered the United States before they were 16 years old, that's required, before 2007. Under President Obama's executive order of 2012, they are entitled to a two-year renewable work permit and the ability to remain in this country without fear of deportation. Now, each one has to go through a criminal background check. They need to be enrolled in a school. They must either be a high school graduate or in the U.S. military. And in the United States today, we have 800,000 that are registered under the DREAMers, 10,000 in my state of Maryland, contributing a half a billion dollars, a half a billion to the Maryland GDP, gross to product, domestic product. They're our next generation of teachers, doctors, engineers, entrepreneurs. They, un they are going to help build America, and they know no other country but the United States. That is their home. Our values, what make America the great nation it is, is that we are a welcoming country. We are a country in which people have come over the years to build this great nation. That's America's strength. Are we going to turn our back now on the values that built this country? Are we going to rip families apart? Is that what America stands for? I find that hard to, to imagine. And will we do this to our own economy, hurt ourselves as we are growing with their help? I've met with many dreamers, uh, not as many as Senator Durbin. I think he probably has the record. But I've met with a lot of dreamers in Maryland. I met, we had some dreamers in our office yesterday, and one had tears in her eyes because she said, I have an expiration date on my back. She doesn't know what's going to happen when that date turns up. How would you like to live under that fear in the United States of America? We're not talking about some communist country. We're talking about America where people are living in fear. I've had several uh, roundtable discussions with dreamers in Maryland. I've had it in College Park. I've had it in Baltimore. I've had it in other areas. Uh, let me just mention two of the dreamers I mentioned uh, that I met with. Adam, who originally uh, was born in Canada. His family grew up in Pakistan. He came to the United States with his parents when he was very young. And Becky, who was born in Peru, came with her parents here in the United States. I mention them collectively because they both attend College Park, University of Maryland. Our state allows the dreamers to, to deal with in-state tuition so they can go to college and get the tools they need in order to succeed. They needed work permits because they had to work. Otherwise, they would never have been able to get through school. They needed a driver's license. Uh, Adam explained to me they needed a driver's license to go to a magnet school so he could advance his own education. That was all possible through President Obama's executive order. And now all that has been put into doubt because of President Trump's announcements that the program will end. It puts their lives on hold in fear, and they wonder whether they need to go into the shadows in the United States of America. President Trump's actions were wrong. We can correct that, and Congress must act. And we must act now before we go home for the holidays. Mr. President, I want to talk about a similar group of people in our country, a large number in my state of Maryland, those that are under temporary protective status, because it's a similar situation. There are 437,000 people in America from El Salvador, Haiti, Honduras, Nicaragua, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. In Maryland, 22,500. El Salvador, Honduras, and Haiti are, by, are, the, are uh, from those three countries alone. 
90% of the TPS people in this country are from El Salvador, Honduras, and Haiti due to three principal company, uh, countries. In my own state, it represents $1.2 billion of our gross domestic product. Th this is a very similar situation to the Dreamers. Uh, they, 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 they get a six to 18 month extension. They've been here for decades because the underlying conditions of the countries in which they came from, these conditions still exist today. I've been to Central America. I can tell you it's not safe for, for these people to, be in, in, to return to their gang activities. They have the same similar situation. They know no other country but America. If they're required to go back to the country in which they were born, it will tear families apart, and they have been disadvantaged by the president's actions, where he's now threatening to end these programs. We need to act. We need to act in order uh, to protect this group of, of citizens. I, 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 I want to quote, I might want to acknowledge my colleagues. We've introduced legislation on this, S-2144, that provides a pathway to citizenship for those that are in TPS status. It's sponsored by Senator Van Hollen, Senator Feinstein, and others, the SECURE Act. We should take that bill up and pass it. Yes, let's provide protection. Let's strengthen Americans' values. Let's do our work. Let's do it now. Let's do it before we go on recess. It's the right thing to do. Let me just conclude by quoting from Becky again, one of the dreamers that I, that I met with. She said the best president, president she ever got was on her 13th birthday when President Obama executed the executive order that gave her legal status and hope here in America. Well, now we can give her an even better present right now before we take recess for the Christmas holiday. We can give her a present of Congress acting to provide protection for the dreamers and for those who are on TPS so they don't have to worry again and they know they have a home here in America. I yield the floor.